three things that bring me joy. Um, the first one, I would say yoga. I love yoga. Um, I'm not very good at it. You will not see me doing any handstands, but I love yoga because it's the one part of my day where I really need to focus all of my attention on stillness and balance, and that's really important for me. And then the second thing that brings me joy is pastries. I love pastries. They bring me so much joy. It's dessert that we're allowed to eat for breakfast, so it just doesn't get any better than that. And then the third thing that brings me joy is the music that plays in Wegmans. I love it. I know the marketing execs at Wegmans probably have some algorithm that says, if you play these songs at this time, it'll increase your profits. And they have me figured out because those are my jams. So if you're ever in Wegmans and you see someone bopping around, lip syncing to all the music, that is definitely me. Today I would like us to talk about finding joy in something that not many of us find joyful. And that's finding joy in admitting when we are wrong. So Adam Grant is a social psychologist and popular TED talker. And he defines the joy of being wrong as the thrill of not believing everything you think. He said that being wrong is something that we should embrace because it means we've learned something, that we've gained knowledge. And as lifelong learners, that's something we should always be striving for. But if only it were that easy. If you're anything like me, you don't find any joy in admitting that you're wrong. And the truth is, we all have some situations in which we're less likely to admit that we are wrong. In 2019, researchers developed and validated a measure called the Willingness to Admit Wrongness measure. And this assesses exactly what it sounds like it assesses, an individual's willingness to admit when she or he is wrong. Subjects are asked to self-report how they might behave in hypothetical situations in order to account for a number of various contexts. So I thought I would read through two of those scenarios for you, and I want you to practice how you would respond. Okay, so scenario one. You were having an argument with a stranger about some random fact. Both of you are quite convinced of your own correctness. However, you begin to realize that the stranger is probably right and that your opinion is not standing up to the facts. In this case, how likely are you to admit that you are wrong? So think about how you would respond to that scenario. Okay, and then the second scenario. You are having an argument with your mother about some random fact. Both of you are quite convinced of your own correctness. However, you begin to realize that your mother is probably right and that your opinion is not standing up to the facts. In this case, how likely are you to admit that you are wrong? So depending on your relationship with your mother, it's possible that your response to the first scenario is different than the second. Or you could take the word mother and replace it with spouse or sibling or that coworker you really don't get along with. And so if admitting when we are wrong is something that we all struggle with sometimes, how do we find that joy that Adam Grant describes? One way we can perhaps explore the joy of being wrong is through embracing the gift of learning. That should hopefully not be too hard here at Roberts Wesleyan University since we are a higher education institution. But I think sometimes we forget that learning is often an intentional choice that we have to make for ourselves. In Deuteronomy 32.2, Moses says to the Israelites, Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. What if we approached all learning in that way and treated knowledge as something that can nourish us and help us grow? When we do that, we don't just actively search for the ways in which we're right, we also actively search for the ways in which we're wrong. This means that when we commit to embracing learning, we move in the direction of uncertainty instead of conviction. We can use that knowledge gained then to help ourselves and help our communities. So my challenge for you this week is to make a mental note every time you find out that you are wrong and find joy in that moment, knowing that you have learned something that you didn't know before. This is not an easy task, but with practice, it's something that will get easier with time. Thank you.